All right, we are joined in this conversation with Minister of Human Settlement, who is also an ANC NEC member, ANC presidential hopeful. How are you, Minister? Thank you so much <laughs> for your like time. The, I don't like the term hopeful. What do you prefer? I Future president? No. <laughs> <laughs> Candidate. Candidate. It's the uh, candidate. Thank you so much for your time. And how's the campaign been going? I mean, you launched it with a bang a few months ago. Yes. How has it been going so far? It is uh, the most draining thing I've encountered because I have a full-time job uh, and uh, many other family responsibilities. So it really is very stressful draining. Mm -hmm. But um, it's going very well. I have a lot of very committed people around me for which I'm grateful. Uh, and um, what I'll do is uh, invite you when we have, uh, when we're together and having a meeting, so uh, you can see us at work and see what it is that we do do. Uh, and most of the time we are strategizing, holding workshops around, uh, you know, messaging and all of that. And uh, then we, have, we go through my program and we go out to the field, wherever it is that I've been invited to, and uh, we speak to our branches. Uh, so we have a whole battery of, you know, components of a battery mm. uh, that are operational, working around the clock. Mm. And, and I imagine those discussions and the several many meetings also mm. involve perhaps even having discussions with other candidates, as you prefer, not necessarily hopeful. Yes. Have you started those negotiations yet? No, no we haven't. Mm -hmm. uh, I think generally uh, the time that you'd expect that there would be any discussions is after nominations. Mm -hmm. Right now, no. I mean, we, we discuss, I, I discuss with everybody about anything. Uh, and if the issue of elections does come up, um, I'm, I'm free to discuss with anybody who raises the issue. But the kind of discussions you're talking about is discussions around uh, mergers yes. and no, no, no. No discussions no, yet. No. And I'm asking that because I remember there was a report that, and I, I know we had already spoken to some of the people that work with you in the campaign yeah, that yeah. clarified things that yeah. seemed to suggest that you were willing to drop your campaign and but, but, I mean, you must jump have been, onto. You must uh, have been crazy <laughs> to even imagine that. Why would I? Yeah. I mean, it took a long time for me to, to, to decide, a lot of mm -hmm. cajoling. Um, and by the time I'd taken that decision, why would I just drop it? Mm. Um, and the people who would, you know, who are behind my campaign would would be the ones who would finally make that decision. And they had, when they approached me, they had very valid reasons why they were asking me to take this up. They were not interested particularly in my personal views, but they wanted, you know, what they described as, you know, the kind of person they're looking for. Yeah. And they'd found that kind of person in me. And uh, by the time I agreed, it means I was committing myself to being that person for them. And uh, therefore, it's no longer just a personal matter. So any discussion around dumping the campaign and going elsewhere is just ludicrous. Yeah. yeah. I mean, we've also seen, I suppose, your name in some of the so-called slates and lists yes, appearing yes, a yeah. lot under Deputy President mm -hmm. Sol Ramaphosa, others as a deputy to um, the ANC Treasurer General, Zulim Kize. Mm -hmm. Have you given that a thought that perhaps after the nomination and you get to a point where you perhaps don't even receive enough support as ANC President, mm -hmm. would you be willing to deputize um, and who would you be willing to work with? No, but I think you're preempting something mm. um, that uh, you would have no basis to preempt right now. Why don't we cross the river when we get to it? Yeah, yeah cross because, the river when we get to it. Because otherwise we we are already in, in, in the sphere of postulating and uh, and it is so different from the, that comment that I was making that, look, I'm not here because I wanted to be here. I'm here because I agreed to people who were wanting me to, to do this for them uh, and for the country and uh, I don't want to postulate anything outside of that mm -hmm. and by the time that uh, we, we get to a point of postulating they'll probably be the ones who are doing the postulating and uh, making assessments. Yeah. Right now um, I'm on target, I'm doing the rounds um, and um, reading up a lot and writing a lot and um, 
going from sleeping less. <laughs> well, I'm not a great sleeper, <laughs> so um, no, my, sl- my sleep is not affected. I, yeah. I, sl- I sleep uh, earlyish in the morning, uh, so that one is not a uh, big big problem. It's just the crisscrossing, you know. You, uh, the times when I find myself in three provinces in one day, mm-hmm. that's taxing. Yeah. But uh, I'm getting used to uh, the, the body's getting used to it, uh, but it is taxing nonetheless. I think you will agree that I mean, especially since we started seeing different ANC leaders coming mm. out and declaring that they will be willing to serve if the branches nominate them, there have mm. been tensions have been high, and I think I mean one of some ANC leaders are describing it as a hotly contested election. And you are now seeing an emergence of this so-called United League where Mm. various provincial leaders are meeting Mm. and want to come up with an uncontested slate. Mm. What are your views on that? Do you think that will save the ANC? I don't know why, um, in the way that you put it, it would be regarded as a hotly contested uh, campaign. I'm, I'm happy to see people in the numbers that have, that have come up come up mm. and say I think I'm ready to, to, to lead because it's it it, uh, it is a measurement of the maturity that we have reached as a ANC uh, and it's a very good measurement we should actually be patting ourselves on the back that mm. you know we have that quality that is able capable of leading and it opens up uh, a democratic process people are no longer just tied to you know um, do you want to sausage or do you want to uh, whatever? You know, it's not just orange or orange or banana. Mm. No, it, it's much more than that. It, it, there's a whole variety of things to choose from, a whole variety of people to choose from, and it. I think it will make for a better organisation. Uh, the people who are unable to to deal with their tensions are the supporters, but amongst the candidates, we have a very cordial relationship. There is there's nothing hot there. It's a very cordial relationship that we all have. And um, the people who, who are out there, you know, making negative comments are largely support base. Mm. And I think it is unfortunate. And I think they should stop it. Mm. Uh, this is not a contestation of different parties. It is happening in one party. And, um, you know, whoever emerges out of this emerges as a leader of the ANC. And we want to make sure that that leader of the ANC is a leader of the country. And therefore, the, the st- these dirty tricks and mudslinging is absolute rubbish because it's almost cutting your nose to spite your face. Yeah. It doesn't work. Yeah, and I, we're going to discuss those dirty tricks mm-hmm. as well, but I want to hear your views on About the, unity the United League and this. Well, I've only, I mean, my very first uh, pronouncement was look, I don't, the reason why I finally agreed is because I don't want us to go to Polokwane. And I publicly apologize for the fact that I myself was part of that Bulawayo. It was two two sides of the ANC um, in in a contestation that actually had become almost uh, unmanageable. I mean, when you look at uh, footage of that conference, that's not the kind of ANC we want to project. Um, and uh, it, it it has taught us that it is it's not a good space. And uh, for me, uh, availing myself, I felt, you know, if anything, it will make sure that we don't have two contestants running. Mm. Uh, And uh, therefore, I threw in my hat. And um, because the unity of the ANC is the most important thing that we have had as as an organization, our motto is unity in diversity. And that's what has taken us through the years. Uh, And uh, we, we thrive on that. Um, and therefore that is the kind of ANC we would like to see going forward. Uh, so if, if, if there are any moves uh, that, that, that are tangible on the ground to ensure that that which we have been preaching all along yeah. does come about, I would welcome it. Yeah. And perhaps we can now talk about the dirty trick, something that you had highlighted earlier. Mm-hmm. We've seen what happened with um, the Deputy President and we don't have to go into the merits of that. Do you think that state resources are being used to fight political battles and do you well, think that dirty tricks at play right now? Well, I, I haven't gone, I haven't spoken to the Deputy President. I haven't gone into the details of 
what 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 is true and not true in that. But just any from anybody's perspective, that is part of dirty tricks. Uh, why would it matter now? What kind of man he is when it didn't matter when he was chosen as deputy president? If he had that problem, it would have surfaced a long. It should have surfaced a long time ago. It is surfacing now precisely because uh, he has to be stopped or whatever. And um, you know, every time I talk to journalists, they say, you know, are you not worried it's coming your way? Yes. No, I'm not worried. <laughs> I mean, whatever. Whatever it is that they throw at, at my face will not stick. I'm not worried at all. If, if uh, by any chance, uh, you know, there are any concerns about the conduct or the ethics or the character of any individual, there is a, there is, the ANC is there. You know, uh, those concerns can be raised with the, there is an electoral college, people who do the screening. And uh, so that can be raised with them that, uh, you know, we, we think that maybe the deputy president uh, has a problem here. We would like you to look at that. Mm -hmm. Maybe somebody else has a problem here. We'd like to look at that. So there will be a time for people to lodge their own uh, concerns if they are so uh, eager to do so or if they feel very driven to do so just, you know, uh, because they feel that it is wrong. Yeah. They will get the space. Uh, and uh, that is done um, in a proper way that will ensure that the integrity of the person is protected. Because when you throw these things out in the open, you are almost condemning them even without giving them the opportunity to respond. By the time they respond, it's gone. Mm. That is dirty tricks. And I wouldn't want that in the ANC at all. And what responsibility does, um, I suppose, the leader of, 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 of government or the leader in government have to ensure that they speak out against this alleged use of state resources? Because the Secretary General says the ANC doesn't have control over the state, but the ANC does um, control the state. It runs government. So what responsibility does you see, the, the leaders is, in government have? I, I don't know where the attacks are coming from. I mm. don't know whether they're coming from state resources or they're coming from private individuals who have the resources to spend. I don't know. Mm. Uh, but it is the responsibility of the ANC to ensure that these things do not happen. It is also my responsibility as an ordinary citizen to say to any journalist, don't take nonsense. It's not right. And if anybody feels very strongly about any candidate, there is a forum to send this to. And there are people there who are able to assess the information and question the individual. And if, should, if they find that indeed the allegations are true, they'll probably say to the individual, we think you should step aside. Mm. Dirty tricks has no place in a liberation movement. Our morality is far beyond that nonsense. Yeah, and I want to take you back to what you said about how you believe that it's a good thing that you would have more people contesting yeah. for the position of yeah. an ANC president. The Secretary General seems to take a view that, in fact, in his words, he said having so many people is absurd and ridiculous. <laughs> no, he is talking about himself. Yeah. The, he, his workload is absurd and ridiculous. The more people, the more his workload becomes, mm. the more... I mean, the bigger the problem for him. That's his problem. Yeah. But for democracy, it, it's wonderful. Yeah. I mean, uh, you will not always have people, you will not have an, un, un, you know, an unseemly number at any given time. But I think it, this, this is democracy at work. Yeah. Uh, because otherwise, what he is saying is, there is a thermometer that somebody holds somewhere that says, this one may be the right person and this one is the right temperature. And nobody has that, except the branches. Mm. Only the branches will be able to say, at the nominations, this is what we think of so-and-so. And the nominations are a, a, a place at which we, you know, the branches sift mm -hmm. those who will make it and those who that they think will not make it. Yeah. So there is a natural process. I don't know what he's fretting about. Yeah. It just means a lot of work for him, but uh, it won't kill him. So if you see him... He will not die because of the work on his desk. Yeah. He just needs to get in more people to help him with that. But no, it is not ridiculous. Mm. Yeah. And you don't believe that the bar has been set so low and that's why you have about eight candidates? Some no, people have suspected actually, that. No, actually I think it is an, in, it, it is a, a, a negative indictment on the mm. candidates. Who determines the bar? Mm. Who has determined the bar? You know, we have a document called the Eye of the Needle. That determines the bar. And, um, so they mustn't look at the president as the bar? Pardon? They mustn't look at the president necessarily as the bar, but that document... The, the document is very clear, and you know, 
the point at which the ANC decided that this is how we're going to guide our people in choosing their leaders was a, you know, um, a bolt of lightning of brilliance. A bolt of lightning from brilliance because we need it more now than possibly at the time that it was drafted. At the time that it was drafted, we possibly foresaw a situation that would get to this. But right now, it is, it is an excellent document that indicates how, how we choose as the ANC, how the branches should be guided, uh, what should be done and what should not be done, uh, code of conduct, all of those things you find in the eye of the needle. So that is the, the basis on which everybody would be able to judge you know, what, what it is we're looking for. And they're clear, very clearly outlined um, traits that we're looking for. For instance, we're looking for somebody whose credentials, whose struggle credentials are impeccable, uh, served with dedication. We're looking for somebody who has been very committed to their work and has uh, shown their commitment in uh, how they have um, exert, uh, exerted themselves in, in their work. Somebody who is um, driven, somebody who um, whose who's, um, belief in the ANC is uh, unchallengeable. And all of those things that will say to anybody, in, in that person's hands, mm -hmm. the ANC is safe. Yeah. And just lastly, uh, Minister, the special NEC will be sitting on Friday. Yeah. What are your expectations and what do you think should be discussed that's critical? There are other people, I mean, Kosati, for example, is saying perhaps this is the time to also have another discussion around the capability of the president as still the head of state. Some are saying the KZN killings must be on the table. The ANC is facing its deepest crisis, as some leaders have admitted. What do you think should be on the agenda? Well, I regretted that we didn't go for a consultative conference. We were at our Morogoro point, you know, for some time before we went to the policy conference. We had reached our Morogoro point, and we should have gone to a consultative conference. Consultative conference is not one where we're talking about policies going forward. It is one that you're talking about here and now. Mm. What is the what is the health status of our organisation? We examine it, you know, into the go into the entrails of, of of the body and find out what it is that ails us, and are able to come up with uh, with uh, uh, resolutions. Uh, what the Morogoro conference has done for the ANC is wonders. We now have documents uh, that we possibly would not have uh, been uh, produced had it not been for the fact that we went to a conference to deal with a specific crisis within the ANC. We have been in a crisis in the ANC and we needed to have talked, but um, I think it is easier for people to look the other way, or if they're not looking the other way, hide their head, head in the sand and pretend nothing is wrong. Uh, when everybody else can see that things are just not going right. Things are not right. Uh, but I don't know if we were in, we had a consensus around the fact that things are not going right. With the Morogoro Conference, O.R. Tambo was one of those people who took, was, was in the lead of taking a decision of coming together. And uh, I, I would have wanted the president to have been in a lead to take a decision to say, let's come together um, and have a consultative conference and uh, postpone the policy conference. Let's fix what, what needs to be fixed. Let's examine what it is uh, and fix it. But um, it seems like uh, there was a difference of opinion between how it should be held and whether it was binding on people uh, to carry through recommendations and in the end it it wasn't a happy ending between the people who proposed the policy conference which were the veterans yes. I mean a consultative conference and the officials of the ANC. Mm. Do you think calls for him to step down as we discussed again? What would be the what would the difference be between now and before? saying those that tried must give up now because it failed two no, times? No, no, I'm not saying that. Mm. Um, I'm saying that we're going to a conference in December. Mm. We're going to have a new leader. 
uh, that person, whoever it is, I, I put to them, has an enormous task on their hand. First, they have to make sure that the ANC is set right. Okay. Yeah. Lovely. Thank you so much, Minister. I really appreciate your time. Thank you.